Good morning. This is Glenn Andrews from Heroes and Kings. It is September 17th. It is 6 o'clock a.m. Eastern Time. And I'm down here in the garage. About to probably get about, I think it's 20,000 meters on this air bike. I do 10,000, I'm doing 2,000 on the bike. And then down there, I'm knocking out about 10 to 15 push-ups in between, in between 2,000 meters and 10 to 15 push-ups. So it come out to about 10 sets of this, which ends up getting about 20,000 meters and about 100 to 150 push-ups. And this, this is what I do, and this is what I'm doing in the morning. Then in the evening, I'll do some weightlifting. It could be doing a lot of leg stuff, not so much a lot of upper body stuff and going heavy. Uh, not not trying to do that kind of stuff anymore. Just just really just want to say stay strong, mobile, and able to finesse. And when I say able to finesse, uh, whatever may be presented as a physical challenge, I'll be able to finesse. That could be changing a flat tire, cutting a tree, moving wood. Uh, <laughs> lifting an engine block, which I can, especially a Ford engine block, which I can still do. And so that's what I mean by finesse. You know, I'm, I'm training the, to be, uh, when, I'll put it to you like this. A lot of stuff I do, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell, tell you a little story about Micah asked me a question. A lot of stuff I do physically just so that if I ever ask my body to step up and do something and put a demand on it, still at this age, my body will show up. My mind will show up. And that's what I, that's why I do a lot of this stuff. No matter, once the, the good Lord wakes me up, let me go 10 toes down. No matter how the day goes, mentally or physically, mentally or physically, if I have to ask my body to do something, whether it be run through an airport, uh, lift something, run to somewhere, jog to something, loosen something, lift something, if I ask my body and my mind to do it, it's not a matter of can or cannot, it's, it's gonna do it. And that's why I do a lot of this stuff. You know, the, the, the physical training, health training, wellness, taking care of yourself. Yes, it's for slowing down the clock and being healthy. But for on another level, for guys, specifically guys and ladies who played sports, soccer, basketball, football, baseball, ran track. Uh, I deal with some triathletes, folks doing Spartans, Tough Mudders. It's hiking. Uh, I got a I got a friend, a teacher, Keith Richardson. He's getting ready to hike the Appalachian. I think you, you pronounce it Appalachian or Appalachia Trail. And there's gonna be times while he's walking, hiking, maybe going up a hill, carrying his his rucksack and all his supplies, that he's gonna ask his body to do something that's beyond what you can fathom. Fathom. And if you do this kind of stuff train and exercise and eat good you know it, it ain't no guarantee but it's a better probability of getting through what you're trying to do if you haven't done anything so that's 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 truly what it truly part of it what it is and then uh just getting up early just getting up early uh micah asked me last night you know <laughs> that how can, do you have to get up early for anything and i'm like not right now. I, I, every now and then, I'll have some clients who are who come over early, five, six o'clock, early in the morning, or I'm meeting someone at the facility. And right now, I don't. Everybody's pretty much in the evening and a little bit later. And then phone call. I got one brother I talked to who's over in Great Britain. And for the most part, I don't. But I rather put myself in uncomfortable situations than to have the world do it. Additionally, like I said, I'll, I'll demand something of my body that 
it's not ready to, it's not prepared to do or handle, so I can do it to me versus the world doing it to me. So she said, well, that's, that's, she said, more power to you with that getting up early stuff. But uh, I'll tell y'all something else. My dad is, is the exact same way. I can call right now and he'll be up already, sitting at the desk, drinking some coffee, up way before the sunrise. And that's his old military army training. And there's something to be said about discipline and army training, military training, what Morehouse teaches us Morehouse men versus what's going on in the world right now. And uh, I think I, I have told the story about how my dad, you know, he used to do a lot of walking. We're a family that walks. We've always been a bunch of walkers, which is the craziest thing. Walkers, riding bikes, running, you know, just just to do it. And he he would walk around. He would walk at Lincoln High. He would walk on Imperial and walk. We lived up on, uh, I forget the name of the subdivision. I should remember, but we lived up on Larwood. And he would just, his, his exercise was walking when he stopped riding the bike. And he still, my parents still walk to this day. They do two miles, two miles a day over at a little park not too far from here. Monday through Friday, they do it winter, summer. The only time they don't do it is when it rains real hard. And he would go walking. And at that time, I was still in San Diego. He would go walking. Every now and then, I would go walk with him. And Pops would just be picking up the trash, you know, way away from the house. He just see stuff on the ground, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. And by the time he got to the house, or by the time he was done, he would go, he would throw everything away. And I kind of was watching him doing this, and I'm like, man, Pops is losing his, he's starting to lose his mind already, picking up all this trash as we're walking. And there was just this one time, me and him went walking around Imperial, which I think it was probably about four, four, three miles. Walked down Imperial, walked up to the house, which was up going through Larwood in the neighborhood, man, it was, it was some hills. So walking with Pops, y'all know what that's all about for those who live in San Diego. Right off Imperial and Lemon Grove Avenue and, and where we lived up in Larwood, not too far from Mama McGill. And he picking up the trash. And so right as we was coming up towards, we got past Shanta, uh, rest in peace to Shanta's mom. We got past Shanta's house. Uh, got past uh, Rand's uncle's house. He lived on the left. Pops was still kind of like picking up trash along the way. And then finally got to the house. He put it in the he put it in the, put it in the trash can. And I just finally asked Pops one day. You know, I said, "Damn, Pops, you know, when we go walking, I, 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 he have a he would have a backpack. I see you got picking up stuff, picking up stuff, picking up stuff coming through the neighborhood." And by the time we get to the house, you throw it all the way in the trash. And I just asked him, you know, how come you doing that? You know, when you be at Lincoln and he see paper and stuff, he he pick it up, throw it in the trash. And he just he just literally said, I mean, if, if I don't do it, who will? If I don't pick up the trash or do this, who will? And he, and he also told us too, when you see people working, don't be standing around with your hands in your pocket. And so. Those two, those two little things, the two little anecdotes of how me and Drew was raised. You know, I, I thought about those things while I was at Morehouse. I thought about those things while I was in corporate America. I thought about those things while I was in those stories while I was in supply chain. And then when I decided to leave that and do my own thing and get into this fitness and health and running gyms and writing books and running an apparel company, I think about those those things. You know. Uh, uh, don't be standing around when there's work to be done and the idea of seeing something that needs to be done and instead of going past it and expecting someone else to do it you, you just go ahead and do it because a lot of times it takes no effort whatsoever and as you look around what you see is a world where everybody has walked past expecting somebody else to do something and it ain't getting done and I had my blinders on for a while because I was just so focused on Rena and the kids and trying to go up corporate America that though I know on the peripheral, I saw a lot, I, I, I realized a lot of stuff was going on, especially when it comes to the community and young kids and crime and, and just how the world was kind of evolving. And again, I'll thank my man, 
Akhenaten and Hotep from, from Hustle University. Because when we were in grad school, we would just have these discussions about what's going on with our, I'm talking almost 10, 15 years ago now. You know, now he got two, two little babies. We were talking about what was going on with our boys, what was going on with our girls, what's going on with our community, what's going on with education, what's going on with opportunity, op entrepreneurship. And the one question that he posed, and I didn't even have an answer, but it, I always thought about it was, what do we teach our kids? Do we teach them history or do we just teach them STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math, and, and teach them all the the skill sets, the trade stuff. So do we teach them the history about being ca the captives, you know, uh, coming from Africa, Ghana, Kemet, Emmett Till, uh, reconstruction, lynching, um, all the stuff that folks call trauma. Do we teach them that or do we just focus, not even kind of shine a light on that or do we just focus on uh, these areas where it, it, it provide you a skill, a trade, you know, make you an asset versus a liability. And over the years, raising Mason and Micah, I've gone back and forth. Well, you know, they don't need to know about this stuff because it's, 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 it's a heavy topic. They just need to keep focusing on physics and math and computers and coding and all this other stuff. And now that my two are about to finish school, and I mentor and coach and train, and I'm talking to different individuals of different backgrounds, different ethnicities, different religions, and my particular gym that I run has a connection to Agnes Scott, Scott, Agnes Scott College, which is a ladies' college, a young girls' college. Uh, I say we, we gotta teach the kids everything. I was listening to a podcast the other day, and it was some, some brothers, real, real, I think it's the King Network, Lapeef Network, and it was like eight brothers on a panel, and they was debate. They was having a discussion about uh, what we pass on to our family and our kids, and pass on as legacy and wealth and all these other things. And one of the things, one one of the ideas was said was, don't look back, don't focus on the past, don't discuss trauma, you know. Keep, almost like keep it rosy and, and positive and I, I don't want to deal with that I don't need that it affects my how I need to move and I'm I was old I'm older than most of those guys so I say no you, you need to know about everything you need to know about everything you want to know everything and you want to keep learning every day you want to know it all because you can know it all you, may not, you won't know it all. Learning is a continuous process, but you must learn everything. You must learn everything. You must be prepared for everything, and it's possible. It is possible. The impossible is possible when it comes to knowledge and being aware of your surroundings and dealing with this environment and dealing with this earth. And so... Yes, some of the history is trauma. Yes, we do need to learn code and coding and trades and STEM and all of this, but our babies need to know everything so they're prepared, straight up. They need to know everything so they're prepared. My mom and dad gave me and Drew everything so we can be prepared. I gave my kids everything so they can be prepared. And to not prepare them for whatever may come is it's 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 a it's it's a ne neglect, but it's not on it's not on purpose, but it is a neglect, especially if you know better. It's one thing if you don't know better, but it's another if you do. So, yeah, you, you, talking about pops and talking about what he what he taught me. For me, getting on doing this, I'm 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 a, probably an introvert by nature, but thanks to Hotep, he's like, hey, G. It's, it's just men, men that just don't move like you, bro. They, they just don't move like you. So I'll get up here and, 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 you know, say my little piece and give my opinion and just post up stuff as a sneak peek into my world. And it's real. It ain't nothing fake. You know, I was on a, on a meeting yesterday with, with my, my district manager, who's a real good friend, Donna, and a lot of the other general managers of the gym. And they was talking about 
posting stuff to social media, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and showing videos of what we do in the gym and what our trainers do. And I've always had a had a issue with some of that fake stock image photos or fake stock image videos because I don't want to do fake. If somebody is bleeding, show it. If somebody's thrown up in the corner, show it. If somebody is crying and they doing battle ropes and come back for for a long run and they lay it out, show it. You know, it, 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 we, to to get to another level physically. You're gonna come right up to that lane, come up right up to that line of what's between discomfort and pain. And a lot of progress and success and, and being better than you were yesterday is where you're gonna come up to that line of being uncomfortable and come up to that line of being in discomfort and possibly it might even be some pain. You know, some of the stuff I've done for my own self before I have any client I'm working with mentally go to that space if that's where they're trying to be so i say make yourself uncomfortable if you see something that needs to be done go ahead and do it you know just go ahead and do it especially men you know i don't i don't put this on women and ladies but if you call yourself a man and you see something that needs to get done you go ahead and get it done you just go ahead and do it and keep on moving you don't, you don't lose no money, you don't lose no effort, you don't lose your manhood, you don't lose your ego. You, you lose nothing for doing things that need to be get done. And so that's how I move. So on this Saturday, or not this Saturday, this Friday, this Good Friday, I'll leave y'all with that. And we gotta quit walking past small things that need to get done that cost us nothing. It, it, it doesn't cost us nothing. I literally had a thought. I woke up this morning, you know, getting ready. I'm eating a little bit better, but we had some sub sandwiches and some chips left over. And the thought that ran into my mind, is, you know what? I, I got a boot camp we're running tomorrow. I got all this food that I, I just don't want to eat. I know where some homeless guys are, where I get off, uh, get off to head to the gym. I think I'm gonna take some of this food and give it to them. That literally was my thought this morning. So, cause I know it's something that needs to happen and something needs to happen even bigger with the homeless situation. But I got all this food, you know, I don't want to eat it. I don't want to throw it away. Let me give it to these to these men who, who can at least get them a, a couple of de couple of days of a decent meal. So this Glenn, Glenn Andrews, I know this kind of long and draw, drawn out, not really <laughs> orchestrated or uh, scripted or whatever, but Y'all, men, gotta, gotta quit walking past things that need to get done and stuff that need to be taken care of and waiting for somebody else to do it. We just gotta do it, so. So Glenn Andrews, Heels and Kings, 2,000 kilometers, 100 push-ups, 10 sets. We're gonna get after it here, and uh, y'all have a great Friday. Don't walk past nothing that needs to get done, whether it be a piece of paper laying on the ground and a trash can right there, go ahead and pick up that piece of paper and put it in the trash. It'll make yourself feel better. Glenn Andrews, Healing King, signing out.